Okay, so where we left off was on the next uh, algebra question, okay? And the question is like this, okay? So you have what is it like a like a seesaw, okay? And the seesaw has uh, two sides, almost like two bags of money. Okay, so it's not a special seesaw, it's actually meant to be touching the triangle here. Okay, now what we're gonna have is two uh, almost like lots of money, okay? So the first lot of money sort of here in the bag, okay, it's going to be a 3x, okay, and that's almost like a scale pan here, and then it's going to have a, another bit of money attached to it, which is going to be a 2x plus 1, okay, 2x plus 1, not the best 2x plus 1 you'll ever see, so 2x plus 1, and then on the other side, we're going to have a weight of a 31, okay, so what we're going to have here is the it's balanced, okay? So if it's balanced, whatever's over the left equals whatever's over the right. So whatever's on the left is going to be 3x plus 2x plus 1, and this will equal 31. Let's add them together. So it's not multiplication, you're adding them together. Okay, so what we're going to have here is 3x plus 2x is 5x. 5x plus 1 equals 31. Bring the 1 over to your side. When the 1 goes over to your side, it becomes a minus 1. So we're going to get 5x equals 30. And then we're going to x equals 30 over 5. x is going to be equal to 6. Okay, so that's quite a handy question. Now, the next question is a, another simultaneous equation. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be solving for x and y. So solve for x, y, and we're going to get 2x plus y equals 13, and the next one's going to be x plus 2y equals 11, okay? So what we're going to have here is we're going to have to multiply these out. Now, once again, I'm going to use my uh, my sort of looking glass. I'm going to get rid of the y. The one y here sees 2, so I'll multiply the bottom one by 2, or multiply the top one by 2. The 2 sees the number 1, so I'll multiply this one by the number 1. And what happens then is we get 4x plus 2y and then equals 26. Next one we get here, it stays the same, x plus 2y equals 11. Now, they're still not cancelling, so in order to make them cancel, I need to change the signs on one of these equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the signs on the bottom equation. So I have minus x, that's now going to be minus 2y minus 11. Add it directly down, we get 4x minus 1x is 3x, 2y minus 2y is 0y, and 16 minus 11 is 15. Basically, 3x equals 15. 3 is multiply on the left, which makes a division on the right. x equals 15 divided by 3. x equals 5. Okay. Now, we haven't got this fully solved yet because we want to find out what y is. So remember, 2x plus y equals 13. x is now 5. That's the first equation, equation A, equation B here. So replacing 5, 2 times 5 plus y equals 13. 10, 2 on the power of 5 is 10. 10 plus y equals 13. Therefore, y must be equal to 3. You can move the 10 over the other side, just to keep the mechanics the same. 13 minus 10, y equals 3. So your answer is 5, 3. Okay. Now, next one we're asked to do is we're asked to solve x squared minus 25 equals 0. Now we have two ways of doing this. The first way is to remember off that formula x squared plus y squared equals x plus y, x minus y. So you're almost treating it like a simplified question on the left. So you're ignoring the equal sign to start and you're going to say, okay, that's x squared minus 5 squared. That in turn is x plus 5, x minus 5. That's going to be equal to 0. Either the first number equals 0 or the second number equals 0. So you're going to have x plus 5 equals 0. Bring over the 5. 
x equals minus 5, or the second number is going to be equal to 0. So you have x minus 5 equals 0, bring out a 5, x equals plus 5. Now, another way to do it would be just to move to 25 over, and you get x squared equals 25. You can square root both sides, and when you square root both sides, you're going to get x equals 5. Now the problem with this answer is it, does, it keeps forgetting the minus 5, so you have to make sure it's plus r minus 5. Okay. Now, next one here is going to be 2x squared minus 4x equals 0. We're going to try and solve this. Now to solve this, what we got to do is we got to take 2 out of... 2 and x is common to both numbers, because 2 divides into 4. So we get 2x into x minus 2 equals 0. And you could either the first number equals 0 or the second number equals 0. So you could have 2x equals 0. This means x is equal to 0. Or for the second number, x minus 2 equals 0. Bring over the 2, x equals 2. If you really got jammed, you could also try a minus b formula, where you could rearrange the formula to look like this. You could say a equals 1, b equals minus 4, and c equals 0. And then try the minus b formula instead. But obviously the minus b formula is a last resort if you just forgot how to do the question, okay? Now, next one is uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Now, I'll always do the reference number for these ones. This is once again a solve question. Okay. And what I'll basically do for these is what I'll do is I'll put them into the uh, calculator here. Okay. So what we'll get is two, uh, we'll do the reference number. So 2 by 3 is 6. Break up 6 into two numbers that multiply together to give you plus 6, but when added together, give you minus 7. So you could go 3 and 2, or 6 and 1. You know 6 and 1 adds to give you plus 7. So if they're both minus, minus 6, minus 1, then they multiply together to give you plus 6, but they add together to give you minus 7. So what you can do is break up this minus 7x into minus 6x minus 1x. It stays the same. There's your 2x squared plus 3 equals 0. Factorize both of them. So what we're going to be left with here is 2x into x minus 3. And remember, both brackets have to be the same. So what number goes in here to make this work? What number multiplies by x to give you minus 1x? The answer is minus 1. So now we're left with 2x minus 1 into x minus 3 equals 0. You put the line down the middle. And what we can get is 2x minus 1 equals 0, 2x equals 1. Now, multiply by 2 on the left equals divide by 2 on the right, x equals a half. Or, x minus 3 equals 0, therefore x equals plus 3. Okay, if you weren't sure about doing that in the test, you could always do the minus b formula, where a equals 2 b equals minus 7, or c equals 3, and you could get out the same answer. But uh, I prefer the reference number as it's slightly quicker. Okay. Next one. Simplify the following certs. Now, what certs are is square roots, okay? Now, uh, lucky enough for us, the Casio calculator basically does this for us, okay? So it's actually quite easy. So all we have to do is root 20, square root of 20 is 2 root 5. Just put it into your calculator, and you're going to be left with 2 root 5. If it wants it in decimal mode, press the, the S arrow arrow D button, S arrow arrow D, and what I'll do is I'll put into decimal points for you, which is 4.47. Or you could have root 125, and root 125. Should be 5 root 5 if I know my stuff. It's 5 root 5 into the Casio calculator. Press the S arrow arrow D button again and you get 11.18. And finally, root 18. 
once again put that into your calculator root 18 and it's going to be 3 root 2 into the calculator press the s arrow arrow d button and you get 4.24 right very simple okay next one we're asked to do is we're asked to solve the following equation solve x minus 5 plus 4 over x equals 0 okay so what we usually do with these is we usually only ever have two numbers like we always ever we when we're doing fractions we only ever have two numbers over the same side so what I'll do here is I'm just gonna bring this 5 over to your side so I'm gonna be left with is 4 over x equals 5 okay now 5 is over 1 x is also over 1 what we can do next is we can uh, do our three lines that we're used to blue line three lines red line and green line the green line is x multiplied by x which is x squared the red line is 1 multiplied by 4 which is 4 and the blue line is 1 multiplied by x which is x and that equals 5 over 1 okay what we need to do next is cross multiply x goes up to the 5 and the 1 goes up here to multiply by the x squared plus 4 so we're going to be left with is x squared plus 4 equals x multiplied by 5 which is 5x we can see that's a quadratic equation because the x squared bring the 5x over to your side and we're going to get x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0 now when you're doing the reference number for a question that has 1x squared it's actually a lot shorter okay so the reference number is basically 1 multiplied by 4 which is 4 the reference number is 4 break 4 up into two numbers that makes minus 5 it's going to be 4 and 1 not 2 and 2 you don't want plus 5 you want minus 5 so it's going to be minus 5 minus 4 and minus 1 now what you know about x squared solving quadratic equations where it's just 1x squared is that basically you can just go straight into the brackets part and then just put in your two numbers which is minus 4 and minus 1. Now what we know is that either the first number equals 0 or the second number equals 0 so either x minus 4 equals 0 bring over the 4 x equals 4 or x minus 1 equals 0 bring over the 1 therefore x equals 1. Okay. Now, the next question. Okay, so the following question, okay, it says solve solve the following quadratic. Solve the following quadratic, which is this equation below, equals zero. Quadratic. I'm gonna do it two ways, okay? So solve the following quadratic in the form in the form uh, a plus or minus root b first of all and then correct to two decimal places two decimal places okay so there's two ways of doing this okay when you see this sort of writing a plus or minus root b or two decimal places it's an indication to you that you have to use the minus b formula. It's not even an option. You actually have to use it, okay? So, once again, we write down what we get in our tables. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay? And therefore, a is going to be equal to 1. b is going to equal 5. And c is going to be equal to minus 2. Now, what we can get next is the minus b formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a okay so what we're going to get next is this minus 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is going to be 5 squared minus 4 times a times c 4 times 1 times minus 2 all divided by 2 times 1 okay put all of this into your calculator 
as shown. So just straight into the calculator. Okay, so we have 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 2. Okay, and we're going to get there as root 33, okay? So root 33. So it's going to be minus 5. Excuse me. It's going to be minus 5 plus or minus root 33 all over 2. So there's basically two answers for this equation, okay? So the first answer is going to be minus 5 over plus root 33 over 2 or minus 5 minus root 33 over 2. So it can be rewritten as this. You can say minus 5 over 2 minus plus root 33 over 2 or it can be minus 5 over 2 minus root 33 over 2. Okay. Usually they would divide out and you'd be just left with a normal square root sign. Now the other way is obviously just to convert it straight into decimal mode. Okay, so if you have root 33, you just convert it straight into decimal mode if you want then. So you have minus 5 plus root 33. Divide that by 2. And what you're going to be left with is 0 0.37228. It rounds off to 0 0.37. And then the other one. It's going to be minus 5 minus root 33 divided by 2. And what you're going to be left with is minus 5.37228, which is equal to minus 5.37. Okay? So just put this directly into your calculator as it looks, and you'll actually get out your decimal places quite easy. Okay. Next one. Uh, the next question is asking me to construct a quadratic equation. So it asks me to construct a quadratic equation construct a quadratic equation with roots with roots minus two and three. Now what roots means is it's that's the answer for our form. So we usually do the reference number method or the minus b method. And what we end up down at the very end is minus 2 and x equals 3. What's basically asking you to do is go in reverse. So this one goes over the other side and we end up with x plus 2 equals 0. On this side, the 3 goes over the other side and we end up with x minus 3 equals 0. The next thing we do is we join both of these numbers together like so. So it's like we're going backwards, okay? And before we went, before we got that, we actually multiplied them out. Okay, so I'm actually running out of space here. Just going to scroll down. Okay, so what we actually did was we multiplied the two of these out. So we would have got was the first number, which is x. x would have been multiplied by x minus 3. And 2 would be multiplied by x minus 3 as well, equal to 0. And then we can just multiply them out, and we get x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. So basically what our answer would have been was x squared minus, not minus 5x, but minus uh, 1x minus 6 equals 0. So that's basically going backwards, okay? Now... We're going to do the same question, except I'm going to put fractions into the answers, okay? So just to make it slightly difficult, just for more practice, okay? So the first answer, I'm going to actually change it. The first answer is going to be minus 2 over 3, and the second answer is going to be 3 over 4. Now, if you imagine this, okay, this would mean that our answers are starting off like this. It means that we're starting off with x equals minus 2 thirds x equals minus 2 over 3 and what x equals 3 over 4. Now what happens here is usually before we get this answer we're just after bringing down the 3 so we bring back up the 3 and we get is 3x equals minus 2. Bring back up the 4. 4x equals 3. 
bring the tree over to the other side so we're basically going in reverse of how we do this normally 3x minus 2 equals 0 4x minus 3 equals 0 then what we're going to get next Okay, so what we're going to get next is we're going to multiply the two of these by each other. So we get 3x minus 2 and the 4x minus 3. All that's going to be equal to 0. Then we've got to multiply the two of these out. So we're going to get 3x into 4x minus 3 minus 2 into 4x minus 3. We're going to have to multiply these out. So I'm just going to rub out the question at this rate. It's just taking up space. And what we're going to get is... 12x squared minus 9x minus 8x minus 2 by minus 3 is plus 6 and the question would have looked something like this it would look 12x squared minus 17x plus 6 equals 0 it's almost like had you been going had you been solving this from the scratch the reference number would have been uh, 72 and we would have broken minus 72 into minus 9, minus 8. But then we would have went down the way we usually do to solve the question, okay? So, that's it's just going in reverse. Now, next one we're asked to do is to solve, a, this is what's called a simultaneous equation, linear and quadratic, okay? So it's asking us to solve x plus y equals 5, and x squared plus y squared equals 13. Okay, so the way to do this is always start off with the linear. This one's the linear because it has no x squared. This one's the quadratic because it has x squared and y squared in it. Start off with the linear, get one letter on its own. I'm going to get x on its own. So x equals 5 minus y. Once I get this, I'm going to sub it in for x. I'm going to replace x with this. So I'm going to get 5 minus y squared plus y squared equals 13. Now we have to remember about 5 minus y squared is it's 5 minus y brackets 5 minus y plus y squared equals 13. Now we got to multiply this out. 5 by 5, 25. 5 by minus y minus 5y minus y by 5 minus 5y okay and y by minus y by minus y is plus y squared and there's another y squared at the end which is this one here equals 13. What we're going to do next is we could have brought over the 13 during this step save ourselves a bit of time so we could have brought over the 13 at the start of this step so we could have minus 13 equals 0 to save ourselves a bit of time. Add the two y's together, the two y squares get you two y squared. Then we have minus 10y here. And then finally we have 25 minus 13. And that's going to get me, or us, it's going to get us plus 12 equal to zero. Now, uh, what you can do is you just do the reference number straight off. But when you have solved questions, you can also divide by two. Okay, you could also divide by 2 and have this equation as y squared minus 5y plus 6 equals 0. Okay, but I'm actually going to show you that this doesn't matter anyway. Okay, although this one is easier. So you just did a normal reference number with 24 if you wanted and solve it normally. Reference number of 24 or the minus b formula here. Get the answer, no problem. But if you divide both sides by 2, it's a bit easier. Now we have a reference number of 6. And the reference number of 6 will give us, uh, what two numbers, when multiplied together, give you 6, but when added together, give you 5. So we could have 6 and 1, but that won't work, because they both have to be negative, or they both have to be positive, and that won't work. 3 and 2 will work, because they can be both negative, and as the, this is the special case of 1y squared, we can get y minus 3, y minus 2 equal to 0. Then we can get, put down the line in the middle, 
So what we can get is y minus 3 equals 0. Where y is going to be equal to 3. Or y minus 2 equals 0. Where y is going to be equal to 2. Okay. So uh, that's stuff. Uh, we haven't completed the answer yet though because we still have to find out what the x values are. And we're going to use the, this equation here that we used at the start when we substitute in. So x equals 5 minus y. So x equals 5 minus y. 5 minus 3 is 2. So if y is 3, x is 2. So one answer is x equals 2, y equals 3. Also known as the point 2, 3. The next one is when y is 2, so x equals 5 minus 2, x is equal to 3. So the second answer is 3, 2. x equals 3 when y equals 2. Okay. Solve and graph. The next question is solve and graph. The solution set on a number line. So it's going to be two into x plus four less than two minus x x is an element of r. Okay. Now x element r means that fractions is included. So the number line at the end, if we have a number line at the end, between points, so if you imagine these are points here, it's going to be a shaded line. Okay. It's going to be a shaded line. It was an element n, it has to be numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, numbers above 1, and it has to be positive and whole. It was x element z. It can be minus numbers like minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. And the line would look something like this, where it has positive, like just gaps and no shaded in line. But however, because this one's x element r, we have a shaded in line, okay? So let's see how we do this. Now, this means it's smaller than this side. So 2 multiplied by x plus 4 is smaller than 2 minus x. So let's multiply it out. We get 2x plus 8 less than 2 minus x. Let's bring the x's to one side. So this x goes over here and the 8 goes over to your side. So we're going to be left with is 2x plus x is less than 2 minus 8. 3x is smaller than minus 6. What numbers must x be? x is going to be smaller than minus 6 divided by 3 x is going to be smaller than minus 2. Now that we know it's minus 2, all the numbers that are smaller than minus 2 are as follows. Now it's not including minus 2. It has to be smaller than minus 2. So minus 2 is not included. You do a hollowed out circle to show that it's not included. Minus, sorry, not minus 1, minus 3, minus 4. This would be minus 1. It's not included at all. Minus 5. And the arrow means it keeps going for good, okay? So it keeps going forever. And you just shade in the line here. All the way up to the arrow. You maybe even want to make the arrow slightly bigger. And that is the answer to that, okay? Everything that's smaller than minus 2. Now, the next question is basically solve. And graph, solve and graph the solution set, the solution set on a number line. Okay, so we have minus 5 is less than 4x plus 7. 4x plus 7 is less than or equal to 35. Once again, x is an element of r. Now, to do this, what we do is we do a split down the middle. 
okay and what you're doing is you're halving the question okay so minus 5 is smaller than 4x plus 7 and 4x plus 7 is smaller than or equal to 35 so do what we normally do now what I'd like to do is a spin okay when I, I like the X's on the left now a spin is something like this if I say 3 is smaller than 4 if I spin this around 4 must be bigger than 3 when you when you switch them around you gotta change the sign so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch these around and change the sign okay then what we can do next is we bring the 7 over to your side and what we get is 4x is greater than minus 5 minus 7 4x is greater than or equal to minus 12 okay and therefore x is greater than minus 12 divided by 4 x is greater than minus 3 now I'm going to show you a different way of doing that same question okay and the different way of doing this question is as follows you could add 4x plus 7 sorry what was it minus 5 excuse me minus 5 less than 4x plus 7 and what we could do here is we bring the 4x to the left and the 5 to the right and you would have got minus 4x less than 7 plus 5 minus 4x is less than 12 now what you need to do here is you can change the science so when you change science so for instance if I told you that minus 5 is smaller than minus 3 it is okay but if I change the science 5 and 3 I also have to change the direction because 5 is greater than 3 so likewise if I change the science 4x is going to be equal greater than minus 12 x is going to be greater than minus 12 over 4 x is greater than minus 3 so there's two ways of doing the same question okay very important that you know both ways okay the next one slightly easier bring over the 7 4x is less than or equal to 35 minus 7 4x is less than or equal to 28 x is less than or equal to 28 divided by 4 x is less than or equal to 7 now we want numbers that are in between minus 3 and 20 and set minus 3 and 7 okay so what we're going to have here we'll start off at minus 4 just to go one more than minus 3 and we gotta go all the way up to 7 now the thing to make sure of is that in the last question it wasn't included so we have to make sure which ones are included and which ones aren't included the 7 here is included okay so it means it's a hollowed in it's a hollowed in dot which means it's included this one has to be greater than minus 3 therefore minus 3 itself is excluded and what we got to do is just got to shade in the region in between both points as shown and this means that all this region is included okay and there is graphed on the number line now the next one uh, which is question 9 make make the letters make the letters in the circles the subject of the formula the new subjects of the formula okay our formula plural okay so a is in a circle which means we need to get a on its own 2a minus b so 2 bracket a minus b equals c now I have two rules when I'm doing these okay you cross multiply if you can you cross multiply if you can and number two is you multiply brackets if you can okay 
and you do this when there's one letter do you know the letter a is what you're looking for and there's only one a so step one and then once you do that you do what i call reverse bombdas okay and reverse bombdas means you start off at the bottom and work your way up subtraction addition division multiplication square roots squares operations and brackets okay so we'll see what we're going to do multiply it out 2a minus 2b equals c now first thing we got to do is a is being multiplied by 2 and then it's being subtracted 2b is being subtracted from it the first thing we got to get rid of is this is what's called reverse bomb dash you don't start at b you start at s get rid of the subtraction 2b goes over to your side so what we end up with is c plus 2b subtraction is now gone multiplication is left let's get rid of this too it's multiplication on the left which makes it division on the right so you're going to get c plus 2b all over 2 okay the next question is the next question is uh, we got to make p the subject of the formula and what we have here is p minus 3r equals s and it's all over q now let's look at what's happening before we can use bombdas we got to cross multiply and get rid of brackets if possible okay so let's start off s over 1 can we cross multiply yes we can cross multiply q goes up to s and the 1 multiplies by the p plus 3r that's going to be p minus 3r sorry it's p minus 3r equals sq now let's see what's happening to p p is not being multiplied but there is subtraction taking place so what we need to do is get rid of this subtraction bring the 3r over to your side and we're going to get p equals sq minus 3r okay <laughs> next one now the next one is going to be we're looking for Q okay oh sorry we're not looking for Q we're looking for Z the next one is we're looking for Z on its own so it's going to be X minus Y divided by Z equals W now we can do this two ways we're not allowed cross multiply because there is a there's there needs to be only there needs to be one fraction on each side one denominator we currently have two denominators over this side so we know the way to turn two denominators into one we just do our three lines okay and our three lines will always <coughs> will always turn one denominate two denominators into one so what we're going to get is x z the red line is going to be minus y and the blue line is going to be z and this equals w over 1 okay now we're going to cross multiply so we're going to get x z multiply 1 by x z minus y and that's still going to say is x z minus y multiply uh, z by w and that's going to be wz now the problem here is we have two z's when we have two z's we need to get all the z's over one side the two of these are linked together so the wz goes to the left and the y goes to the right so what we're going to have next is we're going to have xz plus wz equals y and what can happen here is we can take out z now when you have two letters the golden rule when you have two letters you're going to need to factorize when we have two z's we're going to have to factorize so we have z into x plus w equals y now we can figure this out z is being multiplied by x plus w if it's being multiplied by x plus w multiplication is taking place get rid of the multiplication so this was multiply on the left is now division on the right 
and that's your answer. Now, I will show you one other way of doing the exact same question, okay? So we're just going to go back to the very start of the question, okay? At the very start here, just go backwards. Might be a slightly quicker way of doing the same thing. We'll find out now. What we could have done at the start, maybe, was move the uh, Y minus Z over this side and move the W over the other side. And what this would have got us was X minus W equals Y over Z. Okay? X minus W equals Y over Z. And what we should have got then was we can cross multiply now. Okay? So we're going to bring up the Z up here and the the W, the one up there. So we're going to get Z into X minus W equals Y. Don't multiply it out. Just basically send the x minus w, which is multiplication, back down underneath. So you get y equals x minus w. Okay. So, next one. Okay, so the next section is on indices, okay. So, we're going to ask to do, write the following without Write the following without indices, okay? So write the following. Without indices. Okay. Now to write the following without indices, what we're going to do is 81 to the power of a half. Just put into your calculator. 81 to the power of a half, like, you'll get the answer is 9. Also means root 81, okay? And that equals 9. Next one, 6 to the power of minus 2. You'll get the answer is 1 over 36. 6 to the power of minus 2 is 1 over 6 squared, which is 1 over 36, okay? So you just... So it's 1 over 6 squared, which is also 1 over 36, okay? 1 over 36. Now, the next one is 2 to the power of 3. You put that into your calculator. What it actually means is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, and that will give you 8. Now, please remember the difference between 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 2 by 2 by 2. 2 multiplied by 3 is basically 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6. So please remember the difference, okay? Now, next question, okay? We're going to need the rules of indices for the next question. We're asked to solve the following, okay? So we're asked to solve... We're asked to solve... Uh, do, 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 we're asked to solve 16 into x plus 1 equals 32 okay now in order to do this you need to check up your uh, indice formula okay indices formula now when doing these questions okay what you need to look at is the numbers 16 and 32 16 and 32 don't really speak the same language as each other so what we need to do is we need to convert them to a, a small number if they're both even numbers we'll convert them into twos okay so what we need to do is we need to divide 16, keep dividing 16 by 2 until it comes to number 1. So it comes 8 divided by 2 is 4 divided by 2 equals 2 divided by 2 equals 1. You notice that we needed 4 twos to make this happen. Okay? So 16 is in fact 2 to the power of 4. So we're replacing 16 with 2 to the power of 4 the x plus 1 is still exactly where they were before. Now, it's the same thing for 32. 32 divided by 2 is 16 divided by 2. So it takes 5 2s multiplied together to give you 32. So that's 2 to the power of 5. Now, once you've done that, what you need to do next is you need to figure out 
what formulas you're actually going to use and why you're going to use them. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that you're going to notice that there's brackets, okay? So there's a big no only one big number and the rest of them are indices, as in small numbers. This one here always has two big numbers, it's no use. This one here is division, no use because there's no division here. This one here has only one big number on the left and P and Q. P is going to be 4. Q is X plus 1. Q is the indice that's outside the bracket. And what happens is it tells me to multiply P by Q. So when I multiply P by Q, I'm multiplying 4 by X plus 1, which is going to get me 4X plus 4. Okay? And that's going to be equal to 2 to the power of 5. Now, because the 2's are equal, their powers must also be equal. So 4x plus 4 must equal 5. Bring the 4 over the other side. 4x equals 5 minus 4, which is 1. Sx must equal 1 over 4. You can also check your answer from this question, okay? So you told at the start that 16 to the power of x plus 1 equals 32. Check out what happens when you put a quarter in there. 16 to the power of a quarter plus 1. All inside brackets, by the way. Let's see what it is in the calculator. 16 to the power of a quarter plus 4. And what happens is the answer is 32. So you know you're correct before you leave. Okay, So the answer here is 32. So you're correct. Next question. We're asked to solve for x. We're asked to solve 2 to the power of 5x minus 4. 2 to the power of 5x minus 4 equals 8 root 2. Now, what you're going to see is we're going to have to, uh, once again, use our indices here. Okay? And see which formula we need to use. Now, what most people don't know is that square root, okay? which is this sign here. Square root means to the power of a half. Okay? If it's cube root, it's the power to a third. Okay? So square root is the power of a half. So this means that this one here becomes 2 to the power of a half. Now, 8 and 2s don't speak the same language. Okay? So we need to turn 8 into basically 2s. Okay? So we get 8 and we keep dividing it by 2 until we get it down to 1, that brings it down there, one last one. So it's going to be 3 2's multiplied by each other. So 8 equals 2 to the power of 3. Okay? Now, let's look at the rules that we need to use to do this problem. Okay. Step 1, are all the bases the same? They seem to be the same. So what we notice here is that we're First of all, we need to find something. This is basically 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of half. There's two big numbers here. Okay, so what are we going to look for? Okay, so there's also brackets here, but it's basically 2 to the power of 1 to the power of a half, which is basically 1, P is 1, Q is a half, 1 multiplied by a half is still a half. So it stays the same. So in effect, we can actually get rid of these brackets here. Okay, so the brackets are sort of unnecessary. Okay, so we'll just put the half a bit further in. Now, let's see what's happening here. The next thing we gotta do is figure out which rule we need for this uh, section here. Okay, which rule do we need? We can't use uh, this one here. There's no division. Can't use this one here. There's no brackets and there's two big numbers. And these other ones aren't really relevant. But if we just scroll this down, this one here is of use, okay? So we notice is that it's two big numbers. So A equals 2. The big number is 2. Uh, P equals 3. And Q equals a half. So the answer is 2 is the big number. And add P and Q together. So 3 plus a half is 7 over 2. 
Okay. So 2 to the 5x minus 4 equals 2 to the power of 7 over 2. Now we know that the powers have to equal each other. 5x minus 4 equals 7 over 2. 5x is equal to 7 over 2. The 4 goes over, comes a plus 4. So 7 over 2 plus 4 is 15 over 2. Okay. Uh, 15 over 2, if you want to change into decimal, it's 7.5. So 5x equals 7.5. Therefore, x has to be equal to 7.5 divided by 5. And what we get is one and a half. So x equals one and a half. X equals one point five or x equals three over two. Okay, next one. Write one hundred and twenty five divided by root five as a power. Of 5. Okay, so to write this as a power of 5, what we first of all know is that root 5 is 5 to the power of a half. That's a learn off, okay? Now we get 125 and we divide it by what number we need to turn it into. First 5 goes in 25 times, second 5 goes in 5 times, the third 5 goes in once. Just three of them. 5 to the power of 3. Now, once we have this done, we need to look up our rules, okay? So we've, this is the rules you're given in your table. Okay, so you're given these set of rules here. And let's look at the ones we need to use, okay? So let's go back up here. Okay, so let's look at them. The first rule is no good because they have to be at the same level as each other. It's a big number with a power divided by a big number with a power. This one here will work, this part here. So A equals five, because five is the big number. P equals three, that's the power that's on top, P is three, and Q equals a half. So our answer for this one is going to be five, P is going to be three, minus Q is minus a half. So therefore it's going to be five to the power of what's three minus a half? 3 minus a half is 5 over 2. So 5 to the power of 5 over 2. Now, the next part of that is hence. Now, hence usually means use the answer of what we just did. Hence, solve for x. Okay? And what it says is it wants to know a 5 into 2x plus 3 is equal to 125 divided by root 5. Now, what we can say about this is, it's what we got in the last question, the last part of this question here. We know that the answer is 5 to the power of, we know that's 5 to the power of, 5 to the power of 5 over 2. Okay, so we know that this equals 5 to the power of 5 over 2. So we can rewrite the question like this. 5 to the power of 2x plus 3 equals 5 to the 5 over 2. So now we know that the powers must each equal each other. 2x plus 3 equals 5 over 2. 5 over 2 is uh, 2.5. Bring over the 3 over the other side. So we know that 2x equals uh, 2.5 minus 3 is minus 0.5. Or basically minus a half. And then we can divide by 2. So minus 0.5 divided by 2 is going to be a quarter. So x equals minus a quarter. Because we're bringing down the 2 here. So x equals minus 0.5 divided by 2. x equals minus a quarter. Okay. Now that is the end of the algebra section of the revision.